guys, I am making pie dough today. This actually, I'm gonna make a pie, but um, I need to do this video in two parts so I don't bore you guys to tears. Um, it's Veterans Day and I am representing in veterans colors, or at least two of our flags colors, and thinking about my little daddy today. So, uh, the recipe that I wanna make was one that his mom taught me how to make and I will tell you all about that soon. But the first thing we're gonna do is make a pie crust. Now, I have devised a recipe of my own. It's partially my mom's recipe and it's partially um, borrowed from Reed Drummond. My mom always just used flour, shortening, um, salt and water, and she would use two knives and she would cut them back and forth with just the flour and the shortening until everything was crumbly, the size of little peas. Um, that's a little bit more labor intensive than letting my food processor do the job for me. But if you don't have a food processor, please use a pastry cutter, use two knives, use whatever you want. But here's the recipe. And I love this because it's almost like a shortbread cookie. It's not that sweet, but it's extremely flaky, light, delicate, and it has just a touch of sweetness to it. I start with three cups of flour. And I put that in my food processor. Now, these are wonderful because they're pre-measured. This little Crisco packet. I don't know if y'all have seen these. They're in exactly one cup portions. So, I'm gonna use, the recipe for um, pie dough requires that you have about one part shortening or fat to two parts of flour. So my fat is going to be a combination of Crisco and butter. So I have three cups of flour, so I need a cup and a half of fat. So I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of Crisco, and I'm just going to pinch those into little pieces and put them in my flour. Annie, please, I know there's a dog in the back. I'll let you girls out in a minute and you can go chase them up and down the fence line. Sorry guys. So I've pinched all my shortening and put it in. And then I have a stick and a half of butter. That's also three fourths of a cup. Now you want your butter to be icy cold. When you're making pastry, you have to make it very, very cold. Okay, you gotta have salt. Halls. <laughs> Want this. I know it's hard to hear. So. I just pulse it several times like that until I really, so really kind of crumbly consistency. Can you see what this looks like? I'll bring you in and show you. See how crumbly this is? It's perfect. Now my mom would have done it to where it was the size of peas but we can get it a little finer than that because we have this mechanical process. Our nice little food processor. That's exactly what we want. All right. uh, this is where I deviate from everybody. And I add probably about a quarter of a cup of sugar. And then I pulse that again. <laughs> Okay, my face can't be in this because I'm tall, and if y'all want to see what I'm doing, <laughs> you can only see one thing at a time. Uh, when I say this is easy as pie, I'm not kidding. This is easy as pie. You just crack in one whole egg, put it in there like that, and then you're going to add, I know this sounds weird, but I promise you will not taste it. You're going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar. Just plop it right down in there. And then I pulse a time or two. Get it going around. Now, you're gonna need exactly five tablespoons of water. And I put those in one at a time. It has to be ice water. Remember what I said? We don't want our butter to melt, so we're gonna use icy cold water. So, I'm gonna put that in one at a time through the little hole in the top of your food processor while you're pulsing. So here we go. One, two, three. I don't want to get ice. 
twice. Four and five. And I don't know why, but every time it's a perfect, perfect amount. And your dough will just all come together. You'll have a big ball of dough and you're done. It's beautiful. So now I've told y'all before, I like to make messes, but I don't like to clean them up. So the way I, I hate getting gooey flour off my countertop. So I always prep my surface with a tea towel. Now they make pastry cloths. Uh, you can buy a pastry cloth. It's just a little piece of muslin, but I find that a tea towel works just as well. So you coat that with flour and then you just dump this beautiful pie dough out take my, press my little blade out and look at this. It's just a perfect, wonderful little dough. Okay. Watch those blades. They are sharp little boogers. All right. Now, your hands are warm, so you don't want to work this. You just want to bring it all together in a nice, a nice smooth ball. Oh my gosh, this is like playing with Play-Doh. Okay, then you just make two circles and you're just gonna flatten them into a little disc shape. And because we wanna keep this nice and cold, we're gonna stick these two little discs back in the fridge. I'm just gonna put them in a, a big gallon Ziploc bag and stick them in the fridge for a little while to cool. And then I'll be able to roll them out and they'll be wonderful. If y'all haven't tried this, I encourage you. It is so easy. But I wouldn't judge you if you wanted to buy a Pillsbury, <laughs> a Pillsbury pie crust at the store. Those work well, but this is truly delicious. So here's what our little discs look like. I just put them in these little Ziploc bags individually. Your recipe will make enough for one double crust pie or two single crust pies. Today, I'm only gonna need one crust. Uh, so the other one's gonna go in the freezer. These will last in the freezer for many, many months. So often I will double this batch and then that way I would have four pie crusts and then they're in the freezer for whenever I wanna make a pie, I don't have to mess with the crust. So um, just think about that. It's just as easy to make a double recipe. Uh, it's just a little bit more ingredients, but zero more time. So stick them in the freezer and then you'll have those for the holidays. red handles. It was my little mama Bonnie's and I probably have five or six rolling pins, but I favor this one. It just makes me feel uh, nostalgic to use her things, to know that her little hands rolled out a jillion pies with this thing. It just connects me with her and it makes me feel, makes me feel really um, in touch with my little mama. So we want to make sure we have plenty of flour on our board and plenty of flour on top. We don't want anything to stick. You want to just roll your pie dough in every direction to keep the circle shape. And we're going to want it to be pretty thin. So I have to tell you guys, when we were little and my mom would make these, you know, like I said, she didn't put butter in hers. They were just shortening flour water and a little bit of salt and my sisters of course we were always at my mom's uh, at her side when she was baking she she really didn't teach us by being a formal teacher but I mean she just loved to show us by doing and my sisters would sneak off pinches of her flour dough I didn't really care for it to me 
it tasted like grease on the roof of my mouth. But Sarah, Emily, Julie, maybe even Deanna, I don't know. Um, Norma was pretty little, she was the baby. But um, they would sneak this, they would probably, they could eat a whole ball of pie, pie dough, uh, just raw. I mean, it was, to me it was kind of yucky, but they loved it, and matter of fact, I think they still do. Okay, so once you have it all rolled out, beautifully thin and nice, I just add a teeny tiny bit more of flour, because what I'm gonna do is, there's another reason I use a tea towel, and that is to transfer my pie dough to my pie dish. Um, you just put your rolling pin at the, at the beginning of your, let me do it from the other side so you can see. Put your rolling pin at the beginning of your dough, and then you just pick up your tea towel, and you roll it. And you, as you roll forward, you just lift the towel, and then your pie crust is completely on your rolling pin. You can just lift up your rolling pin and just transfer it right to your pie plate. Now this is very, like I said, it's a very short and flaky crust. So if you have any little tears, you just piece them back together and nobody will be the wiser. Now once you have your pie dough in your pie dish, you want to have a little bit of overhang, but I do go ahead and just kind of even mine up around the edges a little bit because I'm gonna to want to make a really pretty little uh, fluted edge. So you want your pie dough to come over the top and then you're just gonna kind of wad it up as you go around, wad it up over the edge. So you have about the same amount all the way around. Now you can see I've got this edge right here that I've kind of tucked under all the way around my glass. I just use my thumb and my forefinger to make this little ridge all the way around. And then I kind of clean it up. I am very particular about how my pie crust looks. I know it doesn't matter. It tastes the same even if you just take a fork <laughs> and mush it down. But I do like to make these little pretty edges. Around the holidays, like at Thanksgiving, I take the leftover pie dough, I roll it out, and I make little leaf shapes. I have some little cookie cutters um, that look like leaves, and I put them all the way around the top. Instead of doing a little fluted edge like this, I will just go ahead and put leaves all around the border of like a pumpkin pie or an apple pie, and then I'll put a few more leaves on the top beautiful. Sometimes I'll just put the leaves on a cookie sheet and brown them separately because the pie dough usually cooks a little faster, browns a little faster than your actual pie will bake. So I'll do the little decorations for the top. Look at that. Isn't that pretty guys? Pretty little pie crust. If you were going to make um, well, maybe like a, a chocolate pie or a butterscotch pie, you would bake this pie. It's called blind baking. You will bake it um, before you fill it. That would require that you take a fork and dock your pie crust. You will have to make holes in the pie crust all the way around the sides and the bottom so that it doesn't bubble up while it bakes. You can put pie weights in the bottom. You can put a little piece of wax paper on there and then put some dry rice or some pie weights in. Bake it until it's nice and browned and then remove your pie weights and then fill your pie. enjoyed learning how to make pie dough and pie crust. Um, it is a little more labor intensive than just buying one from the store, but you will get a very different outcome too. Um, I will tell you there's one last thing you can do. My little Bonnie, my little sweet mom, always took her leftover pie dough. With the little leftovers, you just gather up all your little pieces roll out a thin little batch and always keep a little bit of cinnamon and sugar mixed together in my cabinets 
she called, my mom called these grandma cookies and probably because her grandma made them. What you'll do is just cut these in little bars, little strips. Transfer each one to a little baking sheet. Of course, I like Silpat because nothing sticks. And then you're just gonna bake these off in a 350 degree oven for maybe 10 minutes, not very long. And when you get these out, they're delightful. And remember that easy cleanup I told you about? Well, watch this. You just fold this up, shake it out over your trash can, put that in your washing machine, <laughs> and you are done. Now, way back in the olden days, women who had pastry cloths, the muslin, um, they would keep the flour, they would just shake it off, they would roll it up, keep it in their drawer, and then they would just reuse it. Um, flour doesn't rot. Uh, you would just shake it off. You don't need to wash it or anything. They would just keep it in their cabinet, and then they would just pull it out. You know, they probably bake two or three times a week, and so they always had their pastry cloth floured. Nothing stuck to it. It was always ready to go. Of course, this is just a tea towel, so I'll throw it in my washer. So here is what a plate of grandma cookies looks like. It makes your kitchen smell so good too. And who doesn't love cinnamon and a crisp little shortbread type cookie? Mmm. Mmm. So good. My little mom could make 10 cents worth of pie dough into an incredible dessert. I remember when we lived in Wisconsin, we lived in an old storehouse. And all around the perimeter were these huge umbrella-shaped leaves that my mom told us were poison and we were not to ever play with. One day she went out with a big butcher knife and she started chopping them at the base. I couldn't believe it. It was like, Mom, why are you chopping poison? It was rhubarb. It was growing all around our house. So all the time we lived in that house, Mama would harvest that rhubarb. She'd come outside with her little apron on and she'd have a butcher knife and she'd cut those stalks down close to the ground. Then she'd bring up the corners of her apron and she'd make a little sling and she'd carry all that rhubarb in the house. She would roll out one of her incredible pie crusts, chop up that rhubarb, sprinkle it with lots of sugar and make the most incredible melt in your mouth rhubarb pies. It was God's bounty that was all around. And I am so thankful for her resourcefulness and her heart to serve her family. Just remember on this Veterans Day, we have a whole world of people out there who served us. The least we can do is serve others. The Bible tells us that uh, people will know us by our love. So what better way than something from your kitchen? That's a thing of joy and it's a gift of service, and it's a gift of love. Bake something for somebody that you care about today. God bless.